Well, how about them dogs? Well, thank y'all so much. It looks like the reports of my political death have been greatly exaggerated. We took our campaign to voters who normally don't support Republicans. Because no matter where you live or what neighborhood you are from, hardworking Georgians want their families safe, their streets safe, and they want good paying jobs and a quality education for their children. Our message to voters was about making sure they had the opportunity to achieve the American dream right here in the Peach State, no matter their zip code. Each day of this race, we talked about how Marty, the girls, and I think we live in the best state in the country to live, work, and raise our families. And we all know that my opponent disagreed. But looking at the results tonight, we made sure that Stacey Abrams is not going to be our governor or your next president. The people in this room and hardworking Georgians all across our state know these last four years have not been easy. Because of a global pandemic, loved ones were lost, jobs were cut, businesses struggled, and lives were uprooted. Nearly overnight, Americans from all walks of life were made to feel anxious, maybe even frightened for their future, their family's future and the future of our country. This was an unprecedented challenge we had never faced before. There was no playbook. There was no widely accepted path forward. No silver bullet that could bring back our normal way of life. On top of that, you add in the 2020 election, pandemic politics, and a lot of people that didn't live here or vote here thinking they knew what was best for our state. At one point, at one point or another, the national media, Stacey Abrams, the health care pundits, far left activists, liberal donors, presidents, both current and former, they all were attacking Georgia. They opposed they opposed our measured approach to protecting both lives and livelihoods. According to the pundits and the so-called experts, if you wanted to keep your barber shop open, you were a threat to public health. If you didn't want a government forcing you or your family to get vaccinated against your will, you were part of the problem. If you wanted to keep your job as a waitress at a local restaurant, they told you that it was too dangerous. If you wanted to go worship in a church, they said no. But you could go gamble in a casino. When parents wanted their kids back in the classroom instead of behind a screen, they listened to the National Teachers Union and the health care pundits who said no. But as you know, they didn't stop there. When we expanded days of early voting and made it easier to vote and hard to cheat with Senate Bill 202, Georgia's Election Integrity Act, you remember? They called it Jim Crow 2.0 and Jim Crow with a suit and tie. According to the media, President Biden and their far left allies if you support photo ID on absentee ballots, you're a racist. If you wanted access to secure ballot drop boxes and more opportunities to vote early on the weekend, they brought in the Department of Justice. And when you wanted to go to the Major League All-Star Baseball game right here in Atlanta, Right here in Atlanta, 
They put politics ahead of America's pastime and cost our small businesses millions. Y'all, they attacked Georgia, but I'm not sure they realized how hard we would fight back. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.